and once uh, as, uh, once the uh, Bayesian uh, method has converged to a solution, you get a distribution, uh, and regardless of how many experiments you run, you are going to get that same distribution. And one of the um, uh, used uh, methods for uh, Bayesian inference is MCMC, which is known as uh, Markov Chain Monte Carlo. And uh, it has been applied to a wide range of uh, uh, geoscience problems in the past that, uh, 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 that uh, is in both uh, the geocoastal uh, areas and also in uh, other geology problems. So uh, just an overview of Bayesian inference. We uh, uh, using Markov chain Monte Carlo, which is a method uh, that uh, that is used to sample from a probability distribution. And we construct a, a Markov chain with a number of steps uh, in order to get the desired uh, distribution as its, as its equilibrium. So it, as you can see on the top there, we have a likelihood. A likelihood is a is a way to describe how well the model output resembles the data. And we have uh, priors, and priors are just uh, uh, information that describes your, uh, your free parameter. For example, a basic prior for the, cases, the case uh, of bad lens uh, on, uh, on the rainfall, parameter would be that, okay, rainfall is a positive, uh, will be a positive value and it could be within some range from 0 to 10, and uh, that could be a prime. So uh, this is just a visual visualization of how you get a distribution from MCMC type sampling method. And in here, we have, uh, in, in step one, we uh, try to propose a, a, a sample uh, uh, through a random walk and which is uh, evaluated uh, via the likelihood function to find how good is your proposal and you either reject or accept the sample. And this is done for thousands of times and that is the trace plot here. This is the trace plot and basically the distribution is a histogram of the trace plot. And this is just an overview of uh, inference versus optimization. In optimization, you kind of discard, you do not care about all the past values that helped you reach to a solution, whereas in inference, you kind of take, uh, you kind of uh, use all the past values that you accepted, or the good values, and then you form a distribution. So rather than having a, a single uh, value for that parameter, you have a distribution. And uh, this, we used, uh, first used uh, this, uh, we proposed a framework called BASRE that uh, basically uh, presents uh, Bayesian inference for the PyRef score that was presented by Tristan. And uh, we worked with him and others in the team. Uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning, what we, what we did is we considered a synthetic core uh, uh, this is an example of how the real data is uh, kind of transferred as a core data set that describes the, the growth of assemblages at different depths. So in this case, we had, we had six different assemblages, and uh, the type of assemblages at the different depths, they basically make the data set. And what we need to find out is what type of flow or sediment values were the, were used at different times of uh, at different depths, and that was basically the the problem. And uh, using uh, uh, this Bayesian framework, where we have we have uh, the Pi four as the model, we uh, proposed uh, thousands of uh, samples. Uh, thousands of proposals for 27 parameters and, uh, and we uh, formed the distributions. 
And uh, this is an example of one of those parameters, which is the Malthusian parameter that kind of uh, describes the interaction of the communities uh, during the evolution of the reef. Uh, and here the, at the bottom, we have the, the trace plot of how that parameter evolved over time for uh, 20,000 samples using the Bayesian inference. And uh, afterwards, uh, on top, that is basically the histogram that describes the distribution. And the red line is basically the true value of that parameter. And here we can see that the Bayesian inference approach um, was uh, useful in, in uh, finding a, a distribution where the modal value is near the optimal or the true value. This is the the a, a kind of visualization of that reef core that was uh, first shown here. Basically, we kind of try to show that at different depths, what are the different uh, assemblages at the different depths. So here you could see that uh, from zero to five meters, the, the, the assemblages were the shallow communities, whereas in the others, uh, there were moderate to deep communities at different times. And the, the dark line basically shows the, the real uh, synthetic core, which kind of resembles the real data. And uh, the dashed line kind of shows the prediction uh, the, uh, through, through the inference by the Bayesian method. Essentially, those parameters that was inferred, those distributions, they, they produced these predictions. And you can see that the predicted value is very close to the real value. But at, at some depths, we see some uncertainty here. So basically, this, this shows that the, the, the core data that we have um, uh, and, and the model uh, that, uh, that there was uncertainty, uncertainty during the, the uh, prediction for those uh, depths. And this could be due to, uh, in, in the real case, this could be due to the way the data, uh, the, the reef is drilled. We, we know that this is a 1D problem. And the, the, the model kind of describes the, the uh, tries to simulate the natural uh, growth of the coral. But we are only considering uh, a drill core at a certain time, a certain area. And uh, that area may not really uh, fully capture the, the community of coral. Maybe in that area, it was a bit different community of coral than, uh, than was in the case. So uh, this, this, kind of, uh, this model kind of considers the, from the six community at different depth, which community, community is the most predominant community in that area. But uh, the, the limitation of the model and the data is that we are not really sure if the place there where you drill, that community is really the predominant community. So therefore, we, we see that there is uncertainty in prediction. So, um, ho ho however, we find that uh, the, the, for the other depths, we, the, the prediction was close, and uh, therefore, base uh, reef is a is a good way to uh, to form uh, uh, the distribution, and uh, it could be further improved by other MCMC methods, and there are uh, like a half a dozen of popular MCMC methods, uh, such as parallel tempering, reversible jump, that could be further used to explore the distributions. Moving on to another application, uh, basing in landscape dynamics via, via base lens. So our bed lens becomes base lens now. And uh, basically, you could see that we have a similar framework here. And uh, the only thing that we are changing is the, the model here, which, which was uh, by four now it is bad lens, but this side everything remains the same, and this gives us more motivation to to try out other models because this is what we are using is more of a framework for more different sets of models in general. So uh, we 
things we now all know about Badlands through Tristan's presentation. So this is just an example of how a crater erodes over time. So we, uh, we in this case, uh, our problem was far less complex than the five base reef case because in there we had 27 parameters, but here we we just have a simple problem with two parameters, the bed lens, where we have rainfall and erodibility. And this is the original sepals, and uh, uh, on this side is the true value for the eroded sepals. And uh, essentially we find the, the distributions for rainfall and uh, erod erodibility, and below there are the the trace plots and the blue line there that kind of shows the, the true value that was used to generate the the, top, the eroded topography. And uh, in in the real in the real world situations, we will not really know those true values. This is just for us to have a small uh, case to to know how efficient is the method. And uh, as you can see. Uh, so, so we have the ground truth topography and then we have the predicted topography via the base lens that has uh, the uncertainty quantification, but we did not really have time to show the visualization for the uncertainty quantification in that this part. And we also are working towards having uh, the predictions uh, across the different uh, time scales, so the successive predictions so that shows the simulation of how the, the landscape eroded. So we, we are working on that. But in principle, the base lens uh, framework is uh, working uh, given this. And what we observe here, we, which we didn't really have time to simulate, but through the, through the results, what we observed was that the, there's a strong correlation between rainfall and erodibility. And, uh, at times, uh, higher rainfall values with a lower erodibility kind of formed uh, similar surface than higher rain erodibility values with the lower rainfall. So there's a good correlation, and we are going to explore how to visualize that and uh, empirically show that correlation in in uh, the near future. So um, the we have come so far, and we have been working on this. Uh, a few months uh, because we had a number of challenges and one of those challenges as you could see that the, the, the example that we have is a very small toy problem because running bad lands on bigger problems uh, takes more time and we are we, that, that example we ran hundred thousand samples and that was a few seconds but if you take a few minutes if a bad lens takes a few minutes then that would become weeks, uh, and we have been having those problems. And hence, uh, uh, in the near future, we are we are exploring better uh, toy problems that show or resemble real world problems. So how do we how do we uh, <coughs> address this problem of uh, badlands taking so long? So one of them is to use a surrogate assisted likelihood functions. Surrogate assisted likelihood functions are more predominant from areas of optimization in machine learning, where you, you uh, because uh, bed lens is taking uh, long, you try to build, uh, use some machine learning technique like a Gaussian process or a neural network, and that uh, technique will learn uh, or try to uh, uh, replicate the properties of bed lens so that you don't, for that 100,000 uh, samples, for example, probably we will, 95,000 uh, times we will use the surrogate because the surrogate is much faster to evaluate and only 5,000 times we will use uh, the actual bed lens. So we will generate data from bed lens uh, to form a surrogate. Basically, we generate data from bed lens by giving a series of inputs in terms of different values of rainfall and erodibility, and then you find out what is uh, the topography output of the bed lens for those values, and we find what the likelihood is, and then 
based on that data set, we train, uh, use um, any machine learning method to train uh, that method. And so because after the method, uh, the machine learning method such as Gaussian process is trained, then we will not need to retrain it anymore, that it is kind of fixed. And then for those, for example, for 95,000 times, instead of waiting for five minutes to run badlands, we will just uh, use the surrogate, which will take less than a second. And uh, in this way, we will speed things up. Then the other the other approach that we are uh, we are uh, working towards is using parallel tempering, and we have seen through the previous uh, uh, distribution that this is not a unimodal but more of a multimodal problem, and multimodal problems are very common for uh, forward models and geoscience in general, and we need to use sampling te techniques that uh, explore multimodality and. The, the, uh, the approach that we used for Pi Reef and uh, Base Lens and Base Reef that was a very canonical sampler, which is an MCMC -MC random walk sampler, and we are moving on to parallel tempering. And parallel tempering, there's a number of advantages of uh, that canonical MCMC -MC sampler. We can, we can harness uh, not just the distributions in terms of multimodality, but we can harness the power of uh, multi-core processing through HPC. So instead of using one core via MCMC, we are distributing over, we could distribute over dozens of cores, uh, uh, the MC, MC. So the parallel tempering here, you can imagine it as breaking the MCMC, which is sequential, into smaller parts. And each of those parts are running in different cores, and they are having the producing distributions that kind of are interacting with, with each other and you collect all those distributions and then you form your uh, desired distribution for each of those parameters. So uh, uh, we, are, uh, we, we, we have uh, explored a Python implementation for this. And uh, so uh, the other the other way ahead is also to look at GPU-based acceleration with for Badlands and Tristan and Osgood. They are already working on this and uh, to use TensorFlow to speed up Badlands. But the, the challenge will be to see how which which, pro, uh, which operations are should be implemented via TensorFlow or GPU in Badlands and which operations will be uh, used. Uh, for parallel tempering by the multi-core architecture. So if you have, uh, we could have hundreds of cores, but then which ones, how the GPU versus the multi-core uh, processing, how are you going to make sure that you are not, uh, that you are saving time between these sorts of computation. So furthermore, uh, we know that at the moment, we are working with very small toy problems, but there is a huge scope for this. And uh, in, in real world cases, uh, if you look at the continent of Australia, for, for the past millions of years, uh, there have been droughts in different areas, for example, and we, we need to, we know that different areas of Australia have different rainfall patterns. So what we are going to do is, uh, the next step for us, immediate next step is, to instead of having a one valley for rainfall, we will have a, a grid for rainfall of, of the region, and we will have a vector for rainfall, so we'll have multiple values. And we can define the grid, which will determine how many, uh, what will be the size of our rainfall vector, and the si same thing for erodibility. And then, uh, also, we are going to look forward to look at time variant rainfall pattern uh, values. So uh, in this way, we can generate, uh, if, if we are successful with parallel tempering uh, approach for this, then at the end, we are generating data about rainfall pattern. And that rainfall data, data pattern could be very helpful in paleoclimate type of uh, research, actually. So, Badlands 
basically is used as a way to generate data. <coughs> and 